What's up gamers, I'm Coach, and this is my Hardcore Iron Man. We have one simple goal on this account, get a quest cape, without dying. It ain't gonna be easy, but it will set the account up nicely for bigger plans down the line. In our last episode we unlocked Invention, knocked out a bizarre collection of quests for access to the Dominion Tower, and managed to pull an Annihilation from a small stack of very wieldy bags, massively upgrading our DPS potential. In this episode, I'm going to be putting the Dominion Tower mission on hold, because I don't want to complete Plague's End to unlock the Elven City of Prif. This is going to be no small feat, as Plague's End requires 75 and a lot of skills, and we still need Agility, Construction, Dungeoneering, Prayer, Summoning, and Woodcutting. Unlocking Prif will grant us the ability to make Crystal Tools, along with a plethora of new skilling methods. To make the Crystal Tools, I'll first need to get the Dragon Variants to upgrade, the Dragon Hatchet comes from Dagonoth Kings, and the Matic comes from Big Game Hunter. And the Pickaxe? Mm, that's a story for another episode. Last episode's wieldy bag opening kinda got me hooked. So I'm gonna be stacking them all throughout this episode to see what we get when we finally make it to the Elven City. My plan for 75 construction is a bit cheeky, but I'm going to be going for it at Croesus. It might not be the fastest way, but the general drops from this boss are just too good to pass up on. Oh no way! <laughs> Let's go! I got a torch! Oh nice. I mean I have a top, a hammer, and a torch. Whoa, that is not a bad wee chest there. We've got the Croesus Foul Torch. I'm going to have to add fixing that up to my to-do list. 12 kill trip there because we had a friend with a 12 kill reaper. 885k cold hard cash. Now that I have both scaling off hands from Croesus, I really want to get them repaired so I can start using them as soon as possible. So I went to Menophos to train fishing to 82 so I could boost to 88 with fungal algae. As I hit the big 75 fishing, we also get 2,000 total level, which is very nice. So here we are, we're just going to run our Tears of Gothics, 151 tears. And it just took me from level 8 to 16 invention. That means we get a whole bunch of new researches we can do. Well, now that we've got uh, 16 invention and we can research equipment dissolvers, augmentation dissolvers, and how to augment armor, let's go research that and see how much XP we can get from discovering stuff. And there's level 17 invention as well. That's kind of cute. Oh, we just got a Slayer level up there. And that was our 80th Reaper task. Nice. We also now have over 300 Reaper points. So let's go take a little look at Death's office, shall we? I think it is time to buy our first ever Incomplete Hydrix. We'll start collecting those, I think. I don't know if I'll do much with it right now, but it can sit in the bank. I need to get my div level up a little bit higher so I can transmute onyxes from the dust and then I can repair this. So, after our incredible luck last episode with the 14 very wieldy sacks, I think we'll stack them again. But getting to them can be a bit of a pain sometimes, so I'm going to try and complete the far-reaching and wild-ranging achievement, which requires that you complete one of each of the wilderness events. And what that allows is it allows you to just teleport to Edgeville and you can talk to Nickel and the Wandering Ramaki there, and they will teleport you straight there. I'm going to try surviving the demon stragglers and see how it goes. Come on, last one, last one! We can do this, we can do this, we can do this. We've got one minute. Oh, we got one minute. We're sweet. Ah, yeah, okay. So to complete far-reaching and wild-ranging, I just need to do Lost Souls, Ramaki Incursion, Spider Swarm, Forgotten Soldiers, and Hellhound Pack. Woo, that was close. Holy moly. Out of food. But we got the achievement! I'll just use the teleport we unlocked with the achievement just before. And, uh, whoops. I forgot to record it. 78 defense, that's kind of cute. Nothing too special from that Reaper task in and of itself, but we passed the 500 boss kill mark, so I can now get the ability cooldown reset from uh, the Altar of War. That's pretty nice. So now I can just stand here and spam anticipate or freedom. How annoying is that? We just got level 95 divination doing a displaced energy event up in the wilderness. 
I was a ninny and didn't record it because I thought that I would be getting 95 from this cache and I would have time to start up my recorder while I was in here. I was wrong. And now I'm 95 Divination, which is an absolutely massive level. Gives us access to the incandescent wisps south of the poison waste. At 69 is my cooking level for now. Sorry. Level 70 is my cooking level. Which actually, incidentally, fun fact, is the highest cooking level requirement for any quest. Which is, I think, Freeing King Awawoji and Recipe for Disaster, just off the top of my head. Jack of Trades coming in here with a massive 90 herb lore. I can now technically burst to 96 with an orange spicy stew to make overloads, but I don't have the Grimwall Spikes to make extreme ranging potions. But we'll get a few of those from Big Game Hunter when we go for our Matic. Before getting stuck into the quests required for Plague's End, I knocked out the Wanted quest here. This allows us access to the White Knight Shop, which provides an easy source of items to disassemble for components to make Augmenters and Gizmos. To get access to buy all the equipment, you need to earn White Knight ranks by killing Black Knights. So I popped off to the Tavali Dungeon to rack up 1300 kill count and get full access to the shop. This is going to make training invention loads easier. While we were doing that, there was a Lost Souls Wilderness event, which took us up to 75 prayer, taking one skill off the list for Plague's End. Another thing I've been meaning to knock out is the fairy tale quests, as they have some huge quantity of life upgrades. Completing fairy tale 1 unlocks the magic secateurs, which can be added to your tool belt, increasing the yield of herbs, hops, and allotment patches by 10%. Fairy tale 2 gives us access to the fairy ring network, opening up a whole lot of new teleports we can easily access with the legends gate we picked up at the end of last episode. Fairy tale 3 gives us some tasty XP rewards, along with magic watering can, which can again be added to the tool belt, providing infinite watering can charges. We can also now use fairy rings without the need for a dragon staff, and farmers will keep our patches weed free if we want. While we were out and about, we got an invite to Croesus. I'm just gonna skip to the end here so you can see the good stuff. Is this final kill? This is final kill. <laughs> we got both offense and two pieces of crap. Thank you so much, Shaky. Thank you, Bonk, for the extra rot, and thank you, Tipsy, for putting up with my shenanigans. Okay, so how does the loot look? Pretty good, I would say. That's our second piece of Cryptloom on the account, and we got some very tidy Alks and a bit of raw GP for that hour as well. Oh, I nearly missed the recording for this. <laughs> we just got 82 fishing. Y'all know what this means. It is time to head off to the Croesus front. All right, now that I've got my five calcified fungus, now the fun part begins. Stewing for the fish. Oh, mine is... To repair the spore hammer, we need 2,500 Croesus flakes, the hammer, the five calcified fungus that we just gathered, and the five fungal algae that we just picked up as well with that stew boost. There we go. Oh boy, that feels good. Let's equip this beastie. Ah, nice. Oh, that feels real good. That's our Tagus Core Hammer fully repaired. Now that I've done that, I think my AFK time, I might still keep fishing, but it's swarmed from now, so I can get a slightly more varied selection of fish. Another incredibly useful item for invention is Slayer Rings, which provide a good source of enhancing components for making augmenters, and for precious components, which can be used to make scavenging perks to get more free components later. To learn to make Slayer Rings requires 300 Slayer Points at the Slayer Shop, so I went back for some more Slayer Point boosting to get those points as quick as possible. Now well, there we go. That might have been a bit of a slow task, but it was our 60th. Got us 75 points, taking us to 355 Slayer Points, so we should be able to unlock Slayer Rings now. We go. Now I should be able to AFK making a whole bunch of those in Fort to disassemble for components. And after that, it was time for a quick Queen Black Dragon Reaper. Oh, 10th QBD kill. Let's go. What we get? Huh. The second Dragon Kin Journal. Oh, nice. We got the first part of a royal crossbow. Cute. Ooh, holy sh... Got a QBD down. One to go after this. What do we get from our second to last chest? Ha! Huh. <laughs> first in it, adrenaline crystal. Oh, yo! We just got 81 magic from that. That is the highest level required for any quest. That's uh, that's for one of a kind, I think. Nice. One more quest gate requirement knocked out. 
Gotta love the XP from these worldly events, eh? I just wrapped up this displaced energy event and we got 96 divination. Nice. Can, can I play nice backwards? Play around with the audio, coach. Sian. There we go. Level 20 invention and 20 plus in all stats now. Time to make some skilling outfits, I think. I should be able to make a mining outfit now. Let's uh, let's see what how much XP we get discovering all of these outfit recipes here, shall we? We didn't get enough XP to get a level, sadly, but I did have enough golem fragments to make 13 pieces of the golem outfit. I just need two more to make the full magic golem, which will be super helpful for mining, especially at Croesus, giving a plus 5% crit chance. Ooh, would you look at that, 66 fletching. I think my downtime now I'm going to spend making broad arrows. So my goal here is to get 80 fletching. You only need 75 fletching for quest cap for River of Blood, but I need 80 fletching so I can repair Santa's Fire Torch and also allow me to make magic short bows so that I can string those up and disassemble them for tensile components so I can make augmenters. So if suddenly I'm just like, oh yeah, I got 80 fletching, that's because I've been doing this AFK. 173 tiers. 51.9k invention XP. Sheesh, that just got us level 24. Oh my god, there are so many unlocks. We can augment tools. Oh, this is huge. Fishing Rodomatic. I'm actually really excited about having one of these. Full gizmo. I really have to make a move on getting my dragon hatchet and Maddox. Coming soon, TM. Very soon. Level 80 Fletching. I wasn't expecting that to go quite as quickly as it did. But yeah, that is 80 fletching done. We can make magic short bows now with flexible components. And I should be able to repair Santa's fire torch once I get to 82 wood cutting and hunter so I can post for 88 to gather the fungus required. Okay, another side objective I've been meaning to do for a while is animal magnetism here to get the Ava's accumulator, which is a solid little upgrade for our range setup. That took us about 15 minutes and got us 73 wood cutting as well. With that out of the way, I think it's time to start hunting for the Dragon Hatchet. This is a 1 in 128 drop from any of the three Dagonoth Kings. So far, I have 96 kills save spotting Rex for Reaper tasks, so it can't be too far off, right? Right? And there's our third warrior ring. Not quite the drop we're after, but I'm going to keep pushing for a bit longer. So, I've been camped at Dagonoth Kings for several hours. I have a total of 219 kill count here today with uh, no uniques other than that warrior ring we got at the start. I'm gonna leave this here and I'll get back to it after tomorrow's Reaper Tusk. So, <laughs> here I am, just disassembling stuff to pass the time before tree. And uh, we get 27 invention, which means I can now level augmented equipment to level 10, which gives us the maximum XP for a disassemble. And I can make equipment siphons so I can get XP from gear that I don't want to disassemble. It's the next day, and our reaper task is eight Rex Matriarchs, who not only drop a decent load of Alx, but also parts of the Lanny Achaea's spear, which would be huge for Slayer. Oh no! That is blue! Dudes! Oh, this reaper's been worth it. Okay, back to killing Dagonoth Kings for the hatchet. We're starting out the day at 315 kill count, so we're due almost three by now. So surely we'll get the drop soon, right? Right, we get the drop, we, we get the drop soon, right? Hello? And just 11 kills into the day, we got ourselves a drop. A berserker ring. So we got back to it. 379 KC, three warrior rings, and one berserker ring. Not too bad. We are over 400 KC without a hatchet here, team. We're going for four times drop rate here. The way we are going, it may actually happen. Oh, I feel like I just... Got another Berserker Ring! Yay! I need lots of these! I'm so glad to be getting Berserker Rings right now! Yay! Berserker Ring number three! We're nearly at right. We're nearly at right. <laughs> Just today's KC. I haven't seen a warrior ring yet. Oh. I should have asked for a hatchet. Too flop, man. 
I'm not leaving until I hit 500 total, KC. Hatchet or 500, KC? Five kills, we're pushing to 500. Can we get a hatchet, yay or nay? This is it, 500 skill for the hatchet! Sadly, even after 500 kills, we are leaving without a hatchet. I, uh, I think I'm gonna take a break to go work on some prep requirements and uh, we'll, 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 we'll just come back to this later. Oh, so here's a good one from dailies. We get 80 Slayer handing these in, which is a requirement for the Light Within, and one more skill requirement for the Quest Cape knocked out. While I've been doing some editing, I decided I'd AFK some agility, because I need level 75. So far we've managed to get level 67 up to 70 agility. I've just pulled all four of these scrolls, which you can hand in to Celia Diggory, up on the surface here for a, I think it's a Master Quest Cape requirement. Yeah, there's a cute little achievement there. Yeah, I plan on using the empty throne room here to train my agility up to 75 for Prif. Holy... Okay, I, I just started recording as fast as I could, but I, I just got... We just got Archie! I was just restoring some artifacts! <laughs> That's absolutely beautiful. Oh my goodness, we got our first skilling bet. Oh boy, that's so cute. Shall we unlock him? Shall we un Let's unlock him now. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Let's get this. Here we go. Oh boy. Here we, here we have unlocked the Archie pet. Get him out. Very first skilling pet. Hey, there's the little guy. Oh, that's so cute. I'm super happy with that. What a nice surprise. Here we go. Wrapping up this cage, we get 97 divination. 97 div means I can also make my onyxes now. That's pretty cool. I feel an upgrade incoming. Let's make all these onyxes really quickly, shall we? Look at all of these bad boys. We're gonna cut the onyx. Use it on the hydrix. We're gonna make a hydrix. Oh. And I'm gonna make a hydrix ring. Holy. That is actually a huge upgrade. For those who aren't familiar with the Ring of Death, it's an incredibly powerful item for a hardcore to have. Not only does it have really solid combat stats and provides bonus adrenaline in combat, it has a life-saving effect. After your sign of life has gone off, if your hit points get reduced to zero again while you're wearing the ring, you heal back to full health and gain the Ring of Death effect, which deals increasing damage over time to you. Unlike a Ring of Life, there's no chance for this to save me if I disconnect or have a client crash, but the Ring of Life can only save me from a hit that's lower than 10% of my max health anyway. This can save me from any hit, except for a few hard insta-kills, but we'll not worry about those for now. We just did an evil tree event to collect our wildy sacks, and we just got us level 75 woodcutting, which is one of the requirements for Within the Light, Nomad's Allergy, but more importantly for Plague's End. We're going to put the very wildy bag in the bank, of course. 52 on the pile now, that is absolutely gorgeous. Not gonna lie, I got bored training agility bikes. So I'm gonna do the last little stint, 75, here on the Anachronia agility course, just for a laugh. There she is. Level 75 agility, one of the requirements for Plague's End. Also, uh, one of the requirements for access to Flash Powder Factory. All right, I think it's time to do a little bit of Hunter, because we need 75 for access to Big Game Hunter, so we can get that Dragon Matic. Figured I'd do this down at Hits Oasis, catching Scarabs. Which is at level 70, which unlocks the next tier of Scarabs, so we should get slightly faster XP per hour when I come back to this. But I think I'm going to call it a Knight on the Hunter here, and uh, we'll try my luck at Dagonoth Kings for the hatchet again tomorrow. So, it's the next day, and here we are, 11 kills in. <laughs> In our inventory, <laughs> the dragon hatchet. Ah! Oh! Only took 527 KC. So after getting the dragon hatchet, it's time for a bit of a detour. Uh, I decided to knock out Let Them Eat Pie. It's a super quick and easy low level quest. Gives you expensive spices, which make all your food heal more when they're in your inventory. Okay, back to Hats Oasis. I need to get 75 to unlock BGH. Oh, level 72, let's go. 
While this method is quite click intensive, the XP rates are competitive, and getting to level 75 does not take me long. I also made sure to restore the statue of Het for the 10% bonus XP along the way, and I purchased all the unlocks that I could from Dundee's store. And, you know, just for that construction XP, I uh, snuck in a couple of hours of Croesus, which always provides some tasty loot. Mm, no uniques today, though. Alright, so I was chilling, doing my Findy Reaper for the day, and I realised I've got enough marks of war to unlock the Maniacal Aura. This is going to be a huge DPS increase, so I'm looking forward to giving this a go a bit later on. So I've decided on my downtime to AFK at Swarm for two reasons. One, to stock up on food for later, and two, for the chance at Sailfish, which I can use at Big Game Hunter. So expect the odd fishing update. And my Rotomatic is now level 10. So we're going to do our first ever disassemble there. It takes us straight from level 30 to 38. I was just enjoying my caches. Wow! Level 98 divination! I totally didn't see that one coming. We are now just one level off our first 99. It's going to be cool having an untrimmed div cape on the account. I felt like heading off to Lumbridge to knock out the Lumbridge achievement tasks. Unlike most task sets, which have four tiers ranging from easy to elite, Lumbridge starts at Pathfinder and ends on hard. They're like the introduction to area tasks, and I love me some area tasks. The ring you get as a reward has a cool teleport to the Cabbage Patch south of Falador, which is great for hit runs, and it provides 15 free high elks per day. So, fishing update. It's slow at our level, but we are stocking up on a good bit of decent food to cook for later, and the fishing XP is okay. The exciting thing is that my fishing rod is at level 10 so I can disassemble it, which takes us up to 43 invention and 40 plus in all skills. This unlocks some cool new blueprints to discover, including the spring cleaner, which can alk or disassemble salvage for us once we upgrade it with a few tight springs. I, uh, I went ahead and bought a few scimitars to disassemble for subtle components, and now I can make another 100 tight springs and upgrade my spring cleaner so it can alk stuff. I need about 400 more springs to unlock disassembly mode, so I'm going to have to keep buying and disassembling scimitars for a bit to get this thing working as intended. Oh, are we recording? Oh my goodness, but there's no chat notification or anything because I was on mobile and we just we just got bubbles the fishing bit oh that's very exciting okay let's let's swap out Archie shall we 3.7 million HP almost 3.8 oh, that's so cool well back to fishing uh -huh. we've leveled up another fishing rod to level 10 here so Let's disassemble that, and that takes us up to level 50 invention, and 50 plus in all skills. We got a little Barrows Reaper. We've got four kills to do. Right, lucky last chest. Can we get a trophy? No, but that was our 100th Reaper. So we get bonus 50 points. I think that means it might be time to buy a Hydrax. As soon as I get to 84 crafting, I'll be able to stew boost up to 90 and make myself a Reaper necklace. Still a minute away, but you know, at least we are prepped and ready to go. So I've been invited to do more crow and I can't say no. Uh, let's see what we get. No way! <laughs> yes way! I feel like that's a good sign for the hour. I'm redeeming Rocky for good luck. No big drops other than Rocky that hour, but uh, as usual, as usual, the common loot from Crow carries. Oh boy, it's finally happened. Adam's given us our first Chin Chomper. He's finally earning his keep. We've had one Chin Chomper, one Spider, and one Gap off him now. But this means that all I need is another one to breed with it. We got a cheeky wee bearers reaper, so here we go. Alrighty, chest number one. Oh, we got Varax Helm dupe. Well, I mean, at least we get drops. Oh, there we go. So all of this AFK fishing has netted us more than just some good invention games. We're 55 now, by the way. But anyway, 90 fishing. That's very exciting because, well, now we get another adventurer in ports. But anyway, let's look at the fish here that we've managed to gather because it's starting to look quite impressive here. We're at over 2,000 raw cave fish. How about half my rock tails here uh, from Crow? We're at 1,100 Raw Great Whites, 430 Mantas, over 600 Blue Blubbers, 
And then our BGH food, we've got over 400 sharks, almost 2,000 mantas, and nearly 200 sailfish, which is going to be really good, because we're going to get into some BGH very soon, um, probably after we get 75 Dungeoneering, and we're going to need all of them sailfish for that, because I'm going to probably do it to push to 84, so that I can hunt the Jodinkos that drop marble vines for farming potions, and also mattocks for archaeology, like BGH is just going to be so, oh, and green wall spikes for overloads, well, I'm getting really close to 99 divs, so I decided to do a run of Memorial to Guthix to finish it up. To do this, you collect engrams from all over the world, then charge them with memory strands and divine energy. Every time you collect an engram, you release a Guthixian butterfly, so make sure to snag those for the free XP in your lowest skill. At the end, you hand the charged engrams in for a big lump of XP. Let's go! <laughs> 99 divination! Oh. Should we go get the cape? This is where you buy the cape, right? I'm not going crazy, huh? Yeah, it is. Can you sell me a divination skill cape? I think I have that money right here. But can you sell me two, please? Because I need one for the for the cutesies. I think I have that right here, actually. Alright, one to wear. Shall we do the emote? <laughs> I never envisioned that being the first 99 on your account, but whatever. But it is what it is. I guess that's just what happens when you're consistent with your caches, though. I have to confess. I've been training a little bit of dungeoneering on the side, but it was kind of on and off, so I've bundled it together here. I started the episode at level 62, needing 13 more levels for Plague's End. While I was pushing for 75 dungeoneering, I managed to get 75 construction from a door in a dungeon, which completed another requirement for Plague's End. I also picked up Bone Crusher with the tokens we collected along the way, which crushes bones for prayer XP. Another wee task I did was Three's Company Saga, so I could smash out the Daemonheim easy tasks for the consequence free death each day whilst training. That only saves lost XP, mine. Dungeoneering is a safe death. It took a few sessions, but I made it to 75, and I even had enough tokens to unlock the Ring of Vigor, which saves 10% adrenaline after casting an ultimate ability. So it's finally time to start Big Game Hunter. There are two main things I want from here. A Dragon Matic, so I can make the Crystal Matic when I get to Proof, and 84 Hunter, so I can catch Igneous Judinkos to make Juju Farming Potions for my herb runs. The dinosaurs also drop eggs for the dino farm, totem pieces, and those green wall spikes are needed for overloads. So I've done one lot of uh, Apoterosaurs, and this is our first ever run of Bagradas. This is, I think, our second Bagrada on the account. Dudes! Was I not just saying a moment ago how dope it would be if we spooned a baby Bagrada? Right, this fella's got a dragon mattock on him. I can feel it. Get your grats is ready. Ah, oh, damn it! I will take 77 hunter though. You may you may still grats me. You may still grats me. Ooh! -hoo! All right, and we know it's red. They're going down. He's going down. And the next one's a good. The next one's a double loop. Like dragon hide. Yeah, you stand there looking away from me and raw, mate. There'll be a tasty morsel here when you when you turn around. Oh no way! We just got a Simitops egg as well! This is dope! We got a baby Bagrata, we got a baby Simitops! Oh, let's go! Let's go with the Vismet, oh! Dude! Is that the 25 points you were talking about, sir? I might actually have to go bank just because I'm picking up so much stuff on this run. There we go, that is 78. Oh, that's my last Pagrada. Okay, let's go, let's go do the, the compass thing. Bang, unlock the speedy traps, and then go hit the semi-toxes. Investigate damage backpack. All right, let's give Erwinson his engraved compass back. This is actually perfect. It's eating up the amount of time required to get the semi-tops off cooldown. Quick tracks, let's go. Uh, it'll be so nice when we're 90 hunting and I can take out one of the frogs, eh? Lucky last one we get. Not a mattock. Not today. I've been looking forward to doing this for quite some time. This is spectacular, chat. We are actually going to make our first ever overloads right now. 
because I only need a plus two for this. Boosted to 99. Let's go. I can finally start using brews. Absolutely epic. Twitch chat was telling me about the hunter outfit you can get from the Ark that boosts hunter XP by 6% when worn. So I've come to the Ark to complete a few daily contracts here for Chime so I can unlock that. Yeah, so I realized daily contracts is going to take way too long. So I've decided to just grind out Chimes by mining alley assault on these crab latines and I'm going to sell that to the shop. Yeah, so I need two and a half thousand of the sea salt here will pay for my hunter outfit. So this might take a little minute. Well, it looks like mining these little crablets for the sea salt to get chimes is paying off in more way than one. We uh, just got 92 mining there. I have finally finished mining up the sea salt to sell for chimes, and I have the Taihido already from the traveling merchant, so I can just buy the hunter outfit now. Before BGH, though, I've got a wee Barrows Reaper to do. <laughs> okay, first chest. What do we get? Jack? Barrows hates me on this account we've established. Okay, chest three, what do we get? Nope. Second to last chest. Oh, damn it! So lucky last chest, we're at 74 KC with four helms. Oh well. What do we get? We take that! Oh, we take that! Oh, that'll do me till I get my reapers. Forsaken, last kill of the Reaper. And our 75th Sparrows kill. Alright, Reaper's done. It is time to head back to BGH. I did not luck out in Polymatic today, but I did make some progress on levels. Hey! That level 79, Hunter. Big drops for big levels. Ah, uh, just big levels, eh? 81 Hunter, just from building the trap. Oh no, I just realized I'm wearing my shark outfit. What the hell? Oh, no way, we got the total move treasures up. Dope. Got 112 BGHs now. During that 112 big game Hunter KC, I uh, I needed to take a little break. So I went to do some more Croesus, which always provides, including Onyx Dust. Now, I'm sorry for this, <laughs> but I need some GP for what I'm about to do. So I am alking my Onyxes, all of them. I'm just alking all the Onyxes. This gives me the raw cash to buy the Spirit Shards for 75 summoning. So let's go grab those. I was prepared earlier and I bought 2,000 jugs of water in advance, so let's get some summoning levels. There is level 65 already. Level 66, let's go. This is such cracked XP. It's level 69 summoning, nice. Oh, and there's level 70, 71, let's go. 73, just two levels to go. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that makes you really excited. Let's go! And that is all of the levels we require for Plague's End. I've, uh, I've gathered the components to make another 400 springs so I can upgrade my spring cleaner to the spring cleaner 3000. This is the level that allows access to the disassembly mode. So I'm just going to set it up to disassemble all salvage worth less than 8k and out all salvage worth 8k or more. Spreading springs to out salvage will upgrade the spring cleaner passively. So from here on out, I'm just going to use the springs to charge it and let it do its thing. So Adam just brought us our second spider. Let's give these little bad boys a roll and uh, see if we've got a breeding pair in there. I'm sick of sheep mail. Oh, they're both male. No! Why? Adam's given us a spider. We have two males in the bank. Please be a female so I can start growing spiders instead of sheep. Oh! Oh! Oh, that is so good! I think I've decided to just take a little break from Big Game Hunter and I've completed all the wildy tasks here. So this gives me the Wilderness Sword 1, which will give me an easy teleport to Edgeville, which is going to be super handy for safe cracking. And here's our first level coming in from safes. 67 thieving. 75 is the goal here, so I can unlock the flash powder factory so we can get the botanist and factory outfit pieces because they provide extra potion doses. Well, we managed to get 70 thieving knocked out, but it's getting late, so I think I'm going to head to bed and come back to this tomorrow. Alrighty, so it's a new day and I've been cracking some safes. Let's just fence off these items. That was very anticlimactic. Climax! <laughs>
There's level 75 thieving. That's now all the levels we need for Flash Powder Factory, but I'm going to go sort that out in our next episode because I want to wait until it comes on Spotlight so that I can shave some time off the grind by using Thala to buy some of those outfit pieces. We just finished up a little infernal start. We, uh, we've got a hundred very wildy rewards on the stack now for when we get the proof um, but also this combat xp lamp here we're gonna throw that into attack and that'll get us level 87 and oh that's so good we can we can we can use our annihilation oh check that thing out I guess melee is now my best in slot combat style. So I'm going to go do my Hellware Reaper and take my Annihilation for a spin. Let's see how this goes. 321, an improvement of 1 minute 5.4 seconds. That's actually really good. Okay, melee, not all bad. Oh, cute. We just got Serenic Essence. Nice. Oh, sheesh. 252, another PB. Task. Let's go! There we go. Oh wait, was that my Reaper Task done as well? Nice. Well, it was a very good wee Reaper Task. Okay, <laughs> distractions aside, I need to get back to Big Game Hunter for 84 and hopefully not go as dry on a Matic as I did on the Hatchet. Oh, we got an Arcane Egg! It's not a Matic, but we take it. All right, last Arcane. Super cute double. Nope. Alright, let's go Bagradas. Let's see if we can pull a baby Bagrada as well. Bruh. Oh, wait. Re <gasps> oh, yo! We got the reinforced Dino Pelt. So I can build the T3 Lodge as soon as I hit 90. Oh, no way! We got our second baby Bagrada! There's 83 Hunter, one level to go. Lucky 150. Oh, yo! Lucky 150! Oh, that feels good. Can we back to back it? Nope, never lucky. Triple Matic incoming? Bro, imagine. I feel like this is a safe spot here. Let's see. Is it gonna... Yeah! Oh, baby. One down, boys. All right, do I have a chill spot to arm that? I don't know if I do, to be honest. Two down. Triple loot and triple XP as well, right? Oh. Well, nothing super shiny from that. Just black dragonites. That did some chunky hunter XP. 155. Ho ho ho! Man, these guys are just shitting eggs. Right, there we go. 84 hunter coming in. Nice. Can we pull our second Matic right here, right now? Because I'm going to leave and go questing if I don't get it right here, right now, this kill. We would be pretty spooned if we pulled the Matic here, but, you know, spooning's what we do sometimes. Ah, no, we're not spooning that one. But, there we go! This allows me to hunt those Igneous Judenkos on Anachronia for marble vines, so I can make the Juju farming potions without having to faff around with Herbal or Habitat. With our dragon tools banked, stats for Plague's End obtained, and all other side missions for the episode completed, all I have standing between me and an elven city is a mountain of quests. Okay, here we go. Let's hand this letter into Jarl for proper now. And that completes making history. Just six quests to go until we have access to Prif. Let's talk to the Tyrus Guard and get catapult construction underway. It looks like that catapult is working to me. Catapult construction completed. Let's get roving elves underway here. All right, get boxed, idiot. Wow. Legacy boxing actually OP. No! I hate these elves. Trolling elves? Yeah, that's what they should call the quest. Trolling elves. It would be a more accurate name. There we go. That is roving elves completed. We got ourselves a crystal bow and we are now just four quests away from unlocking Prif. Okay, Morning's End part one 
Mourners are over here. Oh, no. Let's go sort them out. Oh, wait, hang on. It's our job to dye the sheep so that other idiots can do the sheep herder quest. All right, yeah, I spray painted all the sheep. Hey, there we go. Morning's end. Part one completed. Let's get morning's end part two underway. Climb the staircase west of the entrance. That looks like me. Hey, look, bruh, I did the thing. What's the latest news? So basically, they f***ed up the Temple of Light and it's all a problem and we're all going to die. So, uh, yeah. All right, now we find out how bad our list is. Compile this shit at the general store. And there's our death tally. All right, let's talk to Orion. Hello, Orion. I have fixed the temple. That took a while, but Morning's End Part 2 is finally completed. We've got access to the death altar now. Oh, yo, 76 agility as well. Heck yeah. Let's get within the light happening. And then it is just one more quest after this. I'm ready. Let's go. Whew, Orion is stacked. It's taking out those shatters. Alrighty. Looks like he doesn't have his hardcore status anymore. <laughs> hey, Arianwin, I solved those puzzles and uh, I found a dead dude with a report. Oh, also something about an evil Dark Lord taking over the whole world. But, you know, that is probably not important. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That is within the light. Solved. Here it is. The moment we've all been waiting for. Plague's End. We'll finally get access to the Elfie City. Wow, these elves don't look, uh, they look like they've seen better days. Yeah, that's right. Elves are faking a plague to take up a whole bunch of slaves, and then they're going to sacrifice everyone to summon a dark lord to take up the world. Yeah, let's overthrow the mourners. One shot! Let's go see what King Lathus thinks about this. That's a very nice hat you've got. Last true king, my ass. Let's have no more kings. We've caused some trouble. We need to find the leaders. Okay. We got all the elders together. Yo, what up, Aston? We got the whole gang together? This is the Grand Library. Okay. All I need to do is direct the light from each clan seal into the Seal of Saren. You're not so scary, bro. You're even less scary. I, why did I bring food? <laughs> Apparently the boss is me. No, you cannot die. Incorrect. Ladies and gentlemen, there we go! Plague's End completed. Access to Prif unlocked. 250 quest point milestone achieved. Huge. Let's juice these lamps. Agility, 50k crafting, 50k prayer, 50k mining, 50k herb, 50k dungeoneering, 50k construction, 50k range, 50k summoning, 50k wood cutting. And they got us a ranged level at the very least to 78, which is the final level requirement for River of Blood. Oh, and also the highest range requirement for Quest Game. Convenient. Here it is, team! The Elven City! Finally. Oh, it's been so much skilling. So much questing. And now we are finally here. Just really quickly before the opening chat, I'm just going to snag my quest die and open it for the 250 quest points. All right, what do we get? Runefall Elm Mage 5. I mean, it's a fort. It's a fort. We take a fort and we take a mill. 109 wildy bags. Number one, double magic logs. Oh, medium casket. We take. Oh, Ruby Chalice. Black Dragon Egg and Dragon Rider Gloves. Egg and Salvage. Chalice and Money. Oh, yes! There's our obliteration! 80 to go! We're not even a third of the way in! I'm already happy with this. I'm already happy with this. Just need Desi and a core now. Magic Logs and Salvage. Number three! Huge Salvage and Dragon Rider boots going in! More Agility Brawlers. Thank you! Oh! An Elite Casket. Oh, ho, ho, another busy. Number four, I guess? Ooh, Fire Making Brawlers. Don't mind if I do. Double Dragon Egg. Okay, you know what? I'd almost have rather taken another Annihilation. 
All right, I'm actually just gonna put all these annihilations in the bank because I don't really care about them. They can go with my other one. My other spare one, that is. Another fizzy, another fizzy. Back bolts and magic logs, and we have 14 to go. We got ourselves an obliteration, and we take that. Let's see how much we walk away with once we've out some stuff and sold these things to Nastros. Now, this is also another huge milestone because I'm about to buy my third life. Three and a half mil. Now, bearing in mind that I was at like 1700k when I started the opening. Oh, and the last out there takes us up to 18 mil. Divine coin, is that a life? Yes. 10 million GP? Thank you. There we have it. We've got dragon tools sorted. We've had a play with invention. We've made it all the way to Prith. And got a massive upgrade with that obliteration at the end there. If you're wondering where the necromancy content is, it's a way away yet. I actually got to Prith at the end of, I don't want to say it, at the end of May. All right. So I've got a lot of content still to come. Um, it, as always, though, a massive thank you for watching. Make sure to tune in next time, and uh, hopefully it won't take me so long to get the next episode out. Alrighty, I'm just recording this because this lovely gamer is giving me seven bonds to buy the 250 bank space booster here. I, I, I'm actually kind of blown away by this. This is... I'm actually... Let's redeem these straight away. They gave them to me for the 250 bank booster. Sediana, you... You absolute legend thank you so much for this rest assured that we will not be copping out on stream running out of bank space and it's thanks to you man the community is just too generous sometimes they eh? we just finished a really good stream and then this as well